Let me first begin by thanking you so much for coming for this first midweek uh, prayer session that we are having beginning this year. Uh, indeed, as Elder said, it's been long since we had um, this program in our church, and many members have been asking, Pastor, what happened? When are we starting? And we have started today. Can you say amen? Uh, it's my prayer that um, this will continue uh, even to the coming years. I know having been a disconnected program for a long time, it will again take time for people to climatize with the program. But um, I am glad that those who are here, you are able to come. And um, even though no one came, <laughs> I had vowed today we would stand here <laughs> and, and preach and have a moment to pray. So when I see you in these numbers, I'm so much encouraged. I want to let you also be very encouraged. You don't look at the numbers and say, no, what is happening here? I am sure that uh, going forward, the numbers will continue growing. I want to share briefly from this text of Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse number 9. I know it's a very familiar verse, but I was, <clears throat> as I was thinking through, where do we start? And um, this thought of igniting came into my mind. And I pray that it will set something in your heart to give you reason to come here next week for these programs. We intend also to begin the Friday Vespers, and very soon we will be doing that. Now, the reading of the Word of God, various translations try to put it differently. The New American Standard Version says, verse number nine, but I say, I will not remember him or speak any more in his name. Then in my heart, it becomes like a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary of holding it in, and I cannot endure it. The King James Version, which was read to us, says, Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. Let's pray. Gracious Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done for this moment, now as it is in heaven. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord, the next few minutes I pray that you may put your words into my mouth and order my lips as I speak to your children that we all may be ignited and feel desire to seize the opportunity to be before you every moment because this is the only way for us to remain steadfast in such a corrupted and decaying world. So Lord, speak to us this moment. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Jeremiah is a young man who loves God as a child 
And his heart is so deep with the Lord. You know, as he's growing with other boys and they are having the boys' games and, you know, those common play games that children will have to do when they are growing, Jeremiah was participating in these kind of games. But Jeremiah was very meek and very kind. Jeremiah always reminded other young boys and girls that there are certain things that they cannot do because it is not right to be done. Jeremiah grew knowing that there is right and wrong and as people who believe in God, they ought to practice the right things and not the wrong things. As a child, God started noticing his heart and his feeling towards him. Now at around 15 or so years, the history tells us God appeared to Jeremiah and God called Jeremiah to become a prophet. The time when Jeremiah accepted the call to be a prophet, he was very young, about 15 or so years of age. And this is just a child. There were many people, grown-ups, elderly people, that God could have called to become his mouthpiece, but God chose a young boy called Jeremiah. Now, of course, we know the calling of Jeremiah and how he hasted um, this call and uh, he had every excuse why not he thinks he's fit to take up this assignment. But finally, God was able to convince him that he would become a prophet. And so Jeremiah is a prophet and he has been in the ministry of being a prophet, speaking prophecies and warnings to a people. Of course, we know the times of Jeremiah is being raised to become a prophet. Things were not right with Israel. They are in captivity because of the rebellion and idolatry that was taking root and actually taking root in the nation of Israel. God raises Jeremiah to be his mouthpiece, a warning and a messenger of truth and righteousness in that particular age. Jeremiah excited, though timid, he takes up this ministry in knowing that the Lord is with him, God shall provide and protect him. But as he began his ministry, Jeremiah started discovering that all was not well. He started receiving more suffering, more afflictions than before. Before he became a prophet, Jeremiah had his own life out there. No one cared for him, about him, because he was anyway a child. But as he began speaking of oracles of God and warnings of God that God gave him, many people started growing cold feet towards him. They started looking at him with a different eye. There were murmurings and rumors and whispers and rumor mongering about him. His report was not good before people. They began hating him, and Jeremiah started being persecuted. Now, you see every single Christian believer who comes to Jesus, they come with an expectation that all their problems will cease when they accept Jesus. Many people, when they accept to be baptized, they are feeling that now this is the end of their trouble and tribulations. But as they begin a new journey with Jesus, they discover there are, there are no more trials and temptations, even more than when they did not believe and surrender to Jesus. Jer Jeremiah is in that experience. And as he was being persecuted, we know at some point Jeremiah was thrown into a pit of very cold water where he was left there to die. In fact, the historians will tell us that Jeremiah had more to cry for in his ministry as a prophet than to be happy of. He is known as a weeping prophet. Jeremiah is not weeping because of the things that are happening in his businesses that are happening in his family because of the wrong things he is doing, but Jeremiah is literally suffering because of his commitment to God. You know, friends, there are times when serving God does not make sense. 
You came to him knowing that he is going to protect you. He has promised to provide everything for you. But as you come and you commit yourself to him, you discover is a new avenue of your suffering. People will mock you at your workplace. You are supposed to be promoted, but because of your faith, you can't come to work on Sabbath. That promotion will go to a different person. You walk into an interview hall, and there is particular you know, job that has been advertised by look of all aspect of this uh, this particular um, you know uh, uh, opportunity. You have every qualification. The only thing that you suffer from is that you will not work on Sabbath, and you have been working from one company to another advertisement and applications, and you receiving regrets and regrets because not. You're not qualified, but because you have committed yourself not to work on Sabbath. I don't know how your experience looks like. You are a business person. Your business is not blossoming because many businesses around you receive most customers on Sabbath. This is when people make greatest of sale. This is when businesses are booming on Sabbath. But you have to close your business on Friday evening and you have to open it on Sunday when every other person is now sleeping and resting at home. Your business is not thriving like you'd expect because of your faith. There are bills you have to meet, but then because of many challenges, you are not able to meet them. And so somehow, you begin reflecting in your life, reflecting in your work, this relationship you have in God. Now, before you believed and you surrendered to him, you had many opportunities. You were making money and business was growing. You had a, you had a better career. Maybe you had to stop that career just because of your faith. There's God seem to be the reason why you are suffering. Jeremiah was there. And Jeremiah became so much frustrated, not with people, but with God. Jeremiah looked at everything that was happening around him. He had a conclusion that all these things that are happening because I have volunteered myself to serve this God. Why should I serve him Yet he is not protecting me. He has exposed me to ridicule. has exposed me to every affliction. I'm oppressed from every side just because of my commitment to him. Jeremiah, the Bible says he vowed. I will never speak of this God again. Jeremiah said enough is enough. I had a life before I accepted this responsibility and a better life before I committed myself to this God. Now, because of him I'm suffering, enough is enough. Have I not been dropping every prayer session, a prayer request, speaking to this God concerning the challenges I'm going through just because of my commitment to him? Have I not been waking in the middle of the night praying to him that he may do something in my life? I have become a loving stock in my community. People think that something is wrong with me. Just because of the faith that I have in Jesus. Jeremiah was there and he felt so broken, so frustrated. He had no face before his people. And he knew all this is happening because of his relationship with God. Have you suffered because of your relationship with God? By the way, if you're a Christian and you have not suffered because of your relationship with Christ, something could be wrong in that relationship. Because as I check through the scriptures, 
truly those who are faithfully committed into a relationship with God, they will have a lot to suffer for. Jeremiah was there. And so he said, when I, I, I interrogated the whole situation, the conclusion, the investigations were leading to one problem, God. God. And so because of this, this is my verdict. I then said in my heart, I vowed in my heart, I will not make mention of him again. What an unfortunate moment in a believer's life. When you have looked at your experience, at your life, and you feel that the cause of your problems and afflictions, tribulations, is your faith, and this faith is your relationship with God, and then you vow and say, I have nothing. I'm saying I will never make mention of this God again. I think Without God, have a better life. Speaking things not of God is a better thing for me. When I tell people about my faith, they hate me. I won't be mute. I will have nothing to do with him. And I think they shall give me a new life. I say, I say to myself, I will never make mention of him, nor speak anymore in his name. Ah, there are certain things you used to do for the Lord. But now, you don't do them? Are there certain things you used to do as a believer? Are there certain services you used to give because of God? Is there a ministry that you are involved in because of God, but you're no longer involved in it because you got frustrated? Why are you doing Bible studies with some people? Some are trying to lead them to the Lord, but God seemed not to come through for you. And you gave up on that. Why are you quick to testify about your faith to the people around you, to your colleagues at your workplace, to, to, to your friends? And your, and, but today, you, you, you dare not do that because people made you suffer for your testimony. Jeremiah was there. And Jeremiah descended to die. Go underground and wait for the fate in his life. But I love the way the next segment of this verse is. Jeremiah says, But even as I made that resolve never to mention his name again, even as I vowed never to involve myself in his ministry and in his service, even as I got so much with his God and had nothing to do with him, even as I said I'll never testify about who he is, I'll never share my faith with anyone, I'll never identify myself as an Adventist because this thing is making me suffer in my career life, even as I purpose. To have nothing to do with my faith when I'm out here. But his word. Can you say amen? His word. But his word was in my heart. As a burning fire. Shut up in my bones. Hmm. So Jeremiah is dead. Spiritually. Jeremiah is given up in his ministry as a prophet. And by the way, let me tell you, this is true for me as a pastor. There are moments when I felt like Jeremiah. There are moments when I have felt. No, 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 God. I, I, I don't have to be a pastor to go to heaven. I think God, this is too much for me. Too much for me. There are times I felt I need to give up on this thing and go, I can become a business person or do other things and still keep my faith. Those moments have come my way. As Jeremiah says, as even as I was having that resolve, something 
could not allow me. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire. In other words, as I was dying, there is something in me that was reviving me. As I was giving up, there was something in my heart that was igniting my faith. I was trying to throw away everything, but something in me was pushing, agitating me, and, and reminding me that the battle is not over. Something was in me that kept me alive when I was supposed to be dead. And he says, but your word was in me. You see, I don't know what revives you when you are in those low moments. And every one of us here have their low moments. I don't know what is in you that ignites your faith when circumstances around you have choked your faith. I don't know what is in your life that you have hidden so privately that will always ignite your, 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 your commitment to the Lord. When everything around you is pushing you to shut up. For Jeremiah, he says, your word which was in my heart was to me like a fire that was locked up within my bones. I would try to quench it, but, but there was no avenue of getting into where the fire is and throw or pour some water that the fire was burning in me. This one ignited me, revived me, and it rose again on my feet. And I went prophesying and speaking the oracles of God. Can you say amen? I'm just here this evening, friends, as we begin this experience of midweek of prayer. Something that has died in our experiences. And I'm just asking you this evening, what ignites you as a Christian? What is it that when your brother and your sister have turned against you, what keeps you holding your faith? What is it when brethren in church are ill talking about you? You have no faith in this church. You feel like you're going to go to a different church somewhere or even stop going to church. What keeps your faith? What revives you? What is that friend that holds you not to give up? Jeremiah says, the word of God which I had put in my heart ignited me. You see, friends, the word of God is powerful. The word of God is powerful to ignite you. The word of God is powerful the spoken word of God is powerful to speak to your heart, to penetrate through the dark and thick chambers of your life when you're feeling broken, frustrated, and giving up the word of God has power to come through and light up a fire that can keep you warm when you are in your winter experience as a Christian. The word of God. Paul says it's living and operative. It has a power to work in us. And so the opportunity for you, friend, to hear the word of God the opportunity for you to spare a moment to open the scriptures and read the word of God. The opportunity coming your way to be allowed to hear the word of God should be a privilege that should be coveted by every single Christian. When the Paul says, do not give up assembling together. Can you say amen? Do not give up. 
Because when you give up coming together for the breaking of the word of God, when you give up coming together for sharing of the word of God, something dangerous is going to happen because the life you're living out here has vaults and spikes to choke you, to, to break you, to tear you. The experiences of this life have enough things to break you, to frustrate you, to disappoint you, to discourage you than the things that it gives you hope. Secure time to come before me, receive my word, that in those little moments, you can be ignited like Jeremiah. Can you say amen? And the reason why we are starting the midweek prayer is because we know the privilege we have in hearing the word of God. You see, this word is like a seed. And in fact, an incorruptible seed, which once is planted in your soul, in your heart, it has a way of generating and bringing forth life within you. This word of God, Jeremiah says, it is the reason why I got courage. And we know after Jeremiah's experience and the word of God disturbing him and Jeremiah heeding to the ministry of the word of God in his heart, Jeremiah picked his pieces and he became a powerful prophet and we know how much Jeremiah ministered with the courage and power because he says the word of God was in me. I pray that the midweek prayer experience will ignite your Bible study experience. I pray the midweek experience, the midweek prayer experience may ignite your passion for Christ and for godliness. I pray that the midweek prayers every Wednesday in the church will ignite a sense of your true calling and your relationship with God that no matter the experiences of this life, you will have nothing to fear. I pray that every Wednesday when we come here, the experience of the ministry of God may ignite may light up a new light in you that will remind you of that primitive godliness, that own religion where David says, I sought for privileges to be in the house of the Lord because he says, a single day spent in his house is better than a thousand spent elsewhere. I pray that every Wednesday when we meet here for the reading of the word of God, even just reading without expounding this word of God may be in you like it was in Jeremiah to ignite you, to revive you, to encourage you, and to give you purpose. To remain faithful and stand fast as a Christian in this generation. May your coming here every Wednesday be the reason why you need to stay with the Lord. I pray that even this coming this evening, you will not be in vain. May the Lord meet you at your weakest point. You see those promises of God, those promises in the Bible, and the Bible has enough promises for every single day. May we come here every Wednesday and remind ourselves of the promises of God. When we are going through frustrations in our life, when we are going through disappointments in our lives, when we are going through afflictions of every kind, we can come here midweek and remind us that God has promised to be with us even when we are going through the difficult experiences of life. I pray that your faith may be reignited. 
We've just come from the 10 days of prayer talking about reviving our altars. Going back to the altars, I pray that the, word of God, the desire to stand in the word of God may ignite your true relationship with God. I remember those days when I was growing as an Adventist child in my family. I remember vividly how the local church in my village, those days, the mothers of those days and the fathers of those days, they looked for one to the midweek prayer. I remember how they looked for one to the Friday prayer. I pray that that spirit may be ignited in your life as a believer. We are not looking for every member to come, but we are looking for the remnant who truly believe that even in this age, we can sacrifice a moment to be with the Lord. Can you say amen? Are we not living together with brethren from Muslim who they have enough hours to worship the Lord every single day? They will close their businesses. They will, they will close you out. You have come with your money to give them. They have nothing to do with that money because they have an appointment with the Lord. There is something in them that keeps them yearning to appear before the Lord. I pray that the word of God, like of Jeremiah, may ignite your faith. You will be looking for one to Wednesday when you can come and have a moment to hear the word of God and also pour your heart to him. I want to give you a moment this evening to speak to the Lord. You know from the time we left here on Saturday, the experience you've gone through. And I want you, as we're going to pray, limit your prayer to the experience of these three days. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And maybe today, what you have gone through, just mention it to the Lord. If there's something you're not happy with, you're the Lord, please God, I have been struggling with this thing for the last three or so days. I've brought it to you in your sanctuary. Please take this away from me. Give me a smile tomorrow as I wake in the morning, as I go and sit on that desk, as I receive those customers. Lord, do something. L let me not end this week with this bitter and pleasant experience. Do something for me. Lord, I couldn't wait for Sabbath to come. I've just come midweek to let you know that I need you now. Challenge him. There's something he has done for you for the last four days. Just appear to him in this sanctuary and tell him, Lord, I thank you for what you have done. And if you have done this for me, I truly know even tomorrow and the next day you can still do something to me. That's where we have come. There is pain you have received through the last four days. Give it to the Lord. There are certain things you have done, you don't like them. You wonder, why could I do such kind of things? Maybe it's a kind of a sin you found yourself in. You didn't want to do that thing, but you found yourself there. You're still struggling in your mind. How do I remove this guilt of mind of what I've done? The reason we have come to the house of the Lord, tell him, Lord, you know my weaknesses. This I've done, not because I want to. Please, God, forgive me. Take it away from me. We have come. Not to present ourselves to be seen in the church, but we have come because there's something we truly want to surrender to the Lord and challenge him to take it away. Jeremiah, when read through after that verse, the experience of Jeremiah is completely different. And I pray that you experience the meaning part of this week may be different. Take time. You can kneel down, you can sit, you can stand, but take time, talk to the Lord concerning the four days from Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and today when there's something you need to give to the Lord. Just take your time. That's why you came, just take time and pray. He is willing to ignite you. He's willing to revive you. Is willing to do something.
something in you to give you courage to face this life. He is willing to answer that prayer that has been there for so long. He is willing to do it for you. Just lift it to him. Never give up. Remember all his promises. Jeremiah says, I was dying. I was getting broken. But when I remembered his promises, when I remembered all his promises, he's put in his word. There's one kept disturbing me, reminding me of where I've come from, reminding me of the things God has done in the times past. And if you've done those things in the time past, you can still do it today. Remind him. You have heard testimonies of people saying what the Lord has done for them. Remind God that he also may do them to you. You need to testify. He heals. He heals. Could be sickness, God heals. He forgives. Could be a sin, he forgives. He cleanses. He creates opportunities where there are no opportunities. Just speak to him. I don't know what we're going through. He creates opportunities. Look out for him. Tell him, face it, I'm looking out, Lord. He opens doors that are shut. Just speak to him. There's no need of you going through, bearing that burden all the way to the end of the week. Lay it to him now. In the middle of this week. Challenge him through faith. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the privilege of coming before you midweek to thank you for the things you've done for the four days now. And pray that, Lord, also you may bear the burdens that we have received. Some could be hurt, others could be frustrated. Others going through very stressful experiences, maybe at the workplaces. Things don't seem to come out well. Could be businesses your children are doing and things don't seem to come out well. Could be sicknesses they are struggling with, Lord. And the fear is setting in. It could be that feeling of Jeremiah when he felt abandoned by you and you did not seem to care about him. And he was mad with you and frustrated and he vowed never to mention you again or do anything concerning you. Lord, we thank you for he had taken time as he was growing to feed in your word. That word saved him. That word revived him. That word rekindled a fire. That word became a savior of life. That word, the many promises that you have given, just remembering them and what you have said you are going to do gave him a reason to continue in the ministry you had given him even when everything was falling apart. Many of us, Lord, like Jeremiah, we are torn apart. Many of us are hand-pressed. Many of us, we are afflicted. Many of us, we are mocked, frustrated, and persecuted. Many of us, we have no faith. Many of us, Lord, we have many things that have been happening just because of our faith. We have lost jobs. We have lost opportunities just because of our faith. Many of us are just in the experience of Jeremiah. And they could not even be having any reason to waste time. Either speaking about you, mentioning your name, or serving you, or even creating time for such important meeting like this. Lord, I pray that we may visit your children and the word which has been planted in their hearts as they were growing. The thought of that Tool Adventist belief and practice. So primitive that gives a touch of hope in our hearts. May ignite us, Lord. 
Tana new in our hearts. Create a desire to stay with you, Lord. Create a desire to walk with you like Enoch. Create a desire to live a God life in this life. Create a desire to testify about your goodness even when things seem not to be promising. Create a desire to be your true disciples. Lord, I pray that as we begin the midweek prayer for Nairobi Central Church in this year 2023, may you learn through the power of the Holy Spirit ignite us. Give us a deep desire to attend these spiritual meetings where we know for sure every Wednesday we have a privilege to hear your word spoken and also a moment to share our burdens with you. May we take this privilege and opportunity with all seriousness because I know every worship experience somebody's life is transformed. Lord, I pray that even those who did not come, as go to next week, may we who have come, your spirit to ignite in us a desire to share with our family members, with our brothers, with our colleagues, the importance of coming every Wednesday to be with you. And Lord, I pray that all prayers that are being uttered in this sanctuary today, and every single prayer and desire of the heart shall be presented here every Wednesday will be turned to be a testimony. So Lord, we thank you so much this evening. Even as we dismiss here, we are praying that may we have a new desire, a new experience, a new commitment, a new yearning, a new fire within us to revive every spiritual experience and commitment in our lives as we get prepared for the second coming. Meet your people at the very point of needs. They have spoken to you, Lord, in silence. Answer publicly that they will know indeed your word is true. And they will have confidence to continue approaching you in the experience of this life. This is our prayer this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, everyone. Um, I want to invite um, our prayer ministry leader, Sister Mary. Maybe she has some remarks to make, and then we can dismiss. Good evening, everyone. Just to encourage uh, members that prayer, the prayer cells are on so that members can join their various prayer cells for prayer. We also do have the prayer groups in the women ministry. I want to believe that it is also in all departments. So be encouraged and join the prayer groups. It is, um, it is growth. It helps us to know our God better. And as we do so, it will become our habit. We will not be struggling to know when is the time to pray. Thank you, Pastor, for starting this once again. I believe that uh, we'll move, moving forward, everyone will join in this midweek prayer that will help us to grow um, in knowing Christ better. Thank you very much. <laughs>